हरे कृष्णा ऑडिबल ना ऑडिबल हरे कृष्णा एवरी वन टूडे इज द सेकेंड डे ऑफ चैरियट ऑफ डिवोशन एंड टूडे विथ अस वी हैव अ ग्रेट डिवोटी इज ग्रेस सॉरी चैतन्य प्रभु प्रभु जी आर यू कनेक्टेड ऑलरेडी यस हरे कृष्णा प्रभु दंडवत प्रणाम प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माय हैप्पी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा सो इन द सेकंड डे दस वी हैव सॉरी चैतन्य प्रभु आई विल जस्ट गिव अ स्मॉल इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट हिम प्रभु जी हैज कंप्लीटेड हिज बैचलर्स इन राउरकेला in uh, in the branch of mechanical engineering later he continued working uh, with uh, some international companies and moved to field of teaching also he was the member of national level team in all india children science congress from 2006 which got recognized by our former president dr apj abdul kalam in his days during the college he was a really active member in the voice club and he contributed his best in the growth which helped more than 2000 students to build their character and personality throughout their journey uh, of the degree prabhuji has given hundreds of seminars about topics like power of habits mind control and many more in various institutes of mumbai pune nasik and more he is very keenly interested in studying the vedic scriptures such as bhagavad gita and very enthusiastic about teaching the words of the lord prabhuji has joined iskon uh, as a full time volunteer in the year 2015 to help people devotees like us and you to liberate and enlighten themselves about the knowledge of lord and the consciousness about krishna currently he is the sankirtan uh, he is the he is the head of the sankirtan department of iskon navi mumbai which is in thargar so it is very wonderful and we are honored to have his grace hari chaitanya prabhu with us hari krishna prabhu hari krishna now prabhu you can continue bye ओम ज्ञानांजनाशलाकया चक्षुर्मिता तस्म श्रीगुरव नम सो वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स माय हार्टफुल थैंक्स टू परिशीलन इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू स्पीक ऑन द ग्लोरीज ऑफ रथ यात्रा एंड इज मिस्टीरियस इवेंट्स एंड इंडियड इट्स वेरी ग्रेट एंड डिलाइटेड टू सी दैट uh such kind of forum is created where all the students like you are going to know about our culture about devotion and about lord jagannath uh, who is the heart and soul of the whole world actually but in specific orissa and i being born and brought up in orissa and also studied there so i know the significance of lord jagannath and after being a part of iskon in so many years uh, jagannath holds a specific place in iskon's history and till date also so today <clears throat> we are going to discuss on the mystery behind rath yatra as all of you know in fact your whole series is known as chariot of devotion and this name chariot itself defines rath so on the coming 7th of july we are going to celebrate rath yatra in a great pompous way in puri jagannath puri which attracts more than 10 lakh people annually on that single day and uh, the history behind this rath yatra traces back to thousands of years so today i'm going to discuss three reasons why rath yatra is being celebrated and some descriptions about rath and uh, also i may speak a little about about iskon how iskon is celebrating the yatra 
so let us let me start that as all of you you might be aware that the great temple which we see now was built by the great devotee of lord king indodimna so king indodimna he was the resident of avantipur which is currently ujjain and he traveled to utkal pradesh in search of god in search of lord jagannath and there's a great story behind how lord jagannath manifested in the current form which you see as jagannath baldev and subhadra so they are none other, other than krishna balram and sister subhadra so after indudumna manifested these forms of lord he asked for three benedictions from lord jagannath the first was o oh lord let me not have a single child because if i have a child then after my departure they may claim that this temple belongs to them which i don't want this temple is your temple and it's for public it's for whole it's for everybody that was his mood second benediction which he wanted from lord jagannath was oh lord you should never stop eating every time there should be plenty of preparations should be offered to you and your hands should be always wet because once you finish the meal and you wash your hand the next meal should be ready <clears throat> so that's why you see in jagannath puri thousands of preparations are offered to lord every day practically and uh, no matter how many people go there you will get prasad jagannath prasad this is known as anna chetra this is uh, anna the uh, anna means rice in orissa it will never fall short in jagannath puri and the third benediction was that oh lord you should give darshan to your devotees all the time only one prayer one prayer is equal to 3 and 1/2 hours <clears throat> almost only that much time lord altar is closed rest all the time lord altar is open and you keep giving darshan to everybody so when so lord granted his benedictions to maharaj indudna and when when gundicha the wife of maharaj indudna heard this benediction so she was not affected by other two but the first one affected her because when he asked that i should not have a child so she said are what about me i am a i am a lady i am a woman and every woman wants to become mother so then she prayed to lord oh lord <clears throat> how will i enjoy the vatsalya ras the parental affection if i don't have a child then the lord said oh my dear mother please don't worry in a year i will come and reside at your house for 7 days in a year once i will come and you you will be called as my aunt generally they call it as uh, bua ke ghar ja rahe like that aunt so you will be called my aunt and there you can show your vatsalya prem your parental affection to me that's one reason why lord jagannath comes out to get the love of mother gundicha and he goes from jagannath puri which is known as sri chetra to gundicha mandir almost what 2.8 km from the existing jagannath mandir this temple is there you might be aware of it. this was the first reason the second reason was according to hindu tradition so at that time when temple was built so after many many years there was a rule that only hindus are allowed in that temple i don't know from where it came but there might be that because uh, some people who were eating cows or who were eating other things they were known as milechas or yavanas they were not allowed because they were considered very impure so they were not allowed to enter temple so they but there were many devotees who were non hindus but they were very pure devotees of lord jagannath like one example is salve and uh, many other people were like that so when they pray to lord that oh lord how will we take your darshan <clears throat> because without seeing you we feel bereft we feel very much pained by uh, by your by not seeing you so then lord told don't worry in a year once i will come in my chariot and when you see me you know riding in the chariot all your pain will be mitigated and you will attain my divine shelter 
so to fulfill the desire of those devotees who are not allowed inside temple lord jagannath comes once in a year in the street to give darshan to all the people so is the most merciful lord so there are many temples where this kind of utsav happens so lord comes out in chariot and give darshan to devotees like if you go to sri rangam so there also there are utsav deities which comes out every day you go to udupi you know there is a krishna bal krishna who comes out every day to give darshan to devotees outside in the street but there they have a different set of de deities different set of deities called utsav murti which comes out for uh, you know riding in the chariot but there is only one place in the world which is jagannath puri where the original deity comes out you know to give darshan otherwise deities are always kept inside sanctum sanctorium and always worship there offered bhoga and everything but this is a one deity which comes out original deity comes out to give darshan to the lord uh, to the devotees so that's the second reason to give darshan to his uh devotees who are not allowed inside temple he comes out the third reason third very very confidential reason and which is not quite often discussed and not quite often known but this comes in one of the uh books uh, about lord jagannath and it is authenticated by our iskon uh, acharya shila gaur goind swami maharaj he was a great stalwart devotee of lord jagannath who built a big beautiful temple in bhumneswar iskon bhumneswar you might have you might know this and uh, he was a very great great teacher and great devotee born got up in orissa only and he was disciple of his divine grace ac bhakti na swami propat so he mentions this particular past time of lord jagannath in one of his book so i found out from there and i want to share this thing with you why lord jagannath comes out chariot why he goes to gundicha mandir so for this we have to enter a little bit into krishna leela so you all know that jagannath is krishna himself and you might also know that how he attained this form because once when mother rohini was describing krishna leela to all the 16108 wives of uh, krishna in dwarka so at that time subhadra who was guarding that hall in the door so krishna comes to the right of uh, to the left of subhadra and balram ji comes to the right of subhadra so when three of them are standing and all three were hearing krishna katha so by hearing krishna katha their body got transformed eyes got bulged out hands got shrunken and this form was seen by narad muni so when krishna hears his own krishna katha and specifically about shrimati radha rani so he assumes or he manifests this form of jagannath so jagannath is krishna plus krishna katha so when krishna he hears his own katha he becomes jagannath that is the way we can describe lord jagannath and <clears throat> so what happens uh, one time krishna was feeling very acute separation from gopis specifically shrimati radha rani you all know that krishna was the dear most personality in vrindavan and specifically gopis are the top most devotees of krishna so the modern people they don't understand really what is the significance of gopis uh, they may consider it a very uh, like a cheap relationship between a ordinary boy and girl but that's not so the great acharyas the great tapasvis yogis sanyasis they all glorify the beautiful relationship between gopis and krishna and that's on a very absolute platform very transcendental platform very spiritual platform we all cannot understand this with our mundane vision or mundane understanding uh, about krishna so one time krishna was feeling that acute separation from vrindavan so in that separation he just felt unconscious and he fell unconscious and everybody was very much surprised to see this condition of krishna and all of them were thinking all of them were you know trying to find out solution what to do how to now bring him back to consciousness 
So there suddenly arrived Uddhav and Narad Muni. Uddhav was a very great friend of Krishna. Narad Muni is a very great devotee of Krishna. So Uddhav used to sit with Krishna in you know, uh, Dwarka. So when both of them arrived, so Uddhav was perturbed. Now what to do? So then uh, Narad Muni told Uddhav, uh, uh, you, uh, no, uh, Uddhav told Narad Muni, what we should do? Narad Muni told, let us recite some Krishna Katha. Let us tell him about the stories of Vrindavan, specifically about gopis. When he hears these stories, he will get up. And, but then Narada Muni told, there is one problem in that. If he gets up, he will run towards Vrindavan. And you will not be to stop him. And he will never come back. So then he told, what to do then? So he told, see, one thing we can do. If Krishna goes to Vrindavan and Krishna sees the condition of gopis, Nanda Maharaj and Yasuda there, so seeing their pitiable condition, because they are also feeling acute separation from Krishna since so long he has been out from Vrindavan. So they will, seeing their condition, he will just stay in Vrindavan. He will not like to come back. So then what should we do? So Narayana told Uddhav, you should do one thing. You go. You go to Vrindavan first and you tell the people there so they should be ready to receive Krishna. If they receive in a proper way, so Krishna may stay for some days and then come back. Krishna should not see their suffering because Krishna is so merciful. He, his heart is so malleable that as soon as he sees the suffering condition of Vrindavan, he will stay there permanently. He will not come back. And if he doesn't come back, we can't survive in Dwarka. Everybody will die in Dwarka if Krishna doesn't come back. Because Krishna is the heart and soul of Dwarka also. So, of course, where is Krishna, wherever is Krishna, he is the heart and soul of everybody because he is such a loving personality. So then Krishna told, uh, then Uddhav told, Narguni, I, I accept your suggestion, but I must tell you one thing, that I had a chance to go to Vrindavan on the request of Krishna himself. But when I went there, so I saw the pitiable conditions of Maharaj Nanda, Yasoda Maya, all the gopis, all the gopas, and I promised them that I am going back to Mathura and I will bring back Krishna to you. I had promised them. And I came, when I came to Mathura, I tried to convince Krishna so many times, but he didn't listen to me. And till now, he has not been to Vrindavan. So if I go and tell this thing that Krishna is coming to Vrindavan, then nobody will believe me. They will tell me a liar and they may become angry on me. So it's not possible that I should go. Then, then they told, who should go then? So then they called Balram. Let's call Balram. Balram should go. So Lord Balram came and then uh, they told this has happened. Balram saw the condition of Krishna and then they told that you have to go to Vrindavan and tell them that Krishna is coming. Then Balram also became emotional and he told that how can I go to Vrindavan? If I go, I had been to Vrindavan for two months and I also saw their condition. Their condition is so, so much pathetic in separation of Krishna. So I also told them that I will bring Krishna back because he's my younger brother. He should listen to me. Why he's not coming? I will tell, I will go and bring him. But Krishna is very stubborn. He, whatever he decides that is full and final. So he's, I told him so many times, go to Vrindavan and pacify your mother, father, your parents, your friends, gopas, gopis. But Krishna didn't listen to me. So if I go, and uh, I saw my face there, they will also blame me and they will not like my presence. They will not believe me also. So then, then who will go? Who will go and tell Brinda Vajvasis that Krishna is coming? Then Subhadra came, their sister in Dwarka. Subhadra told, I can go because all of you are male members and you can cheat, you can tell lie. But being a female, I, I can convince them. And they are all very dear to me and they will understand my request. And if they, if I go, they will listen to me because they will give their love to me. So let me go first and I will um, tell them that Krishna is coming. So we'll prepare nicely so that Krishna comes there. So then Subhadra 
uh, everybody agreed oh this is a wonderful idea so subhadra chariot was prepared and uh, so then subhadra was preparing to leave but then balram told no 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 you cannot go alone let me also come with you you should not go alone so then balram chariot was prepared and balram left first he he left hurriedly first so that's why you see the balram chariot comes first when rathatra happens lord balram rath comes first and then subhadra comes rath sec uh, subhadra rath comes second and then when both narad and uddhava they started glorifying rajalila the past tense of vrindavan krishna suddenly got awakened and he started shouting where is vrindavan where is vrindavan where is vrindavan am i seeing a dream or not where is vrindavan where am i here why am i in this you no know, opulence opulent house opulent building now where is vana where is where is gopis he started just you know shouting there he told am i seeing dream or what then they told no 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 hold on calm down calm down yes you are going to vrindavan krishna your chariot is ready see outside daruka is standing daruka is the chariot driver of krishna uh, he is standing with the chariot outside please mount the chariot and go go for vrindavan so when krishna was moving when he was coming from his palace to the chariot he was you know like intoxicated he was so much absorbed in thinking of radharani and gopi so much that he was like kind of a drunken person he was intoxicated and you know that uddhava and narad muni had to carry him literally so you know and he was like kind of you know not in a stable state and then he they took him and you know placed in chariot this is the same way how during uh, panda vijay festival you see how lord jagannath comes from the temple to the chariot you will see on 7th july every year we see that how lord comes with the you know, dancing and all the these pandas they you know they bring lord with you know such and lord is, is a full kind of intoxicated person it's a very big very nice festival uh, they first they pray, bend him down then back then down then back like this very big festival so lord comes in a very uh, like not a very stable condition so then this this is how this is the reason behind it so then krishna mounts a chariot and then krishna goes so this is the significant third reason third uh, significance why lord goes uh, in rath so this is when lord goes in rath yatra so we consider that lord is traveling from dwarka to vrindavan so the sri ji mandir which is there in puri that big temple that is considered as dwarka because that is opulent and gundicha mandir is considered vrindavan so all the devotees when they pull the you know uh, rope of the rath so that is considered they are bringing krishna back to vrindavan this is significance one more time there was uh, when krishna was in kurukshetra so he had gone for some uh, some function so at that time because kurukshetra is near by vrindavan so if you go now also you see kurukshetra is near by vrindavan so all the gopis headed by radharani they went there they told to krishna krishna what kind of form you have made uh, where is your uh, peacock feather where is your vajanti mala where is your pitambar where is your forest flowers where is your forest garland what kind of ways gusa you have made here come come to vrindavan so krishna said, no no i am i am now the king i am an official tour i can't come back with you so they wanted to forcibly bring krishna's chariot to vrindavan from kurukshetra but they were unsuccessful krishna didn't came there but that's also one significance when sri chaitanya mahaprabhu was dancing in rath yatra and when he was pulling the cart so he was in the mood that we are bringing krishna back to vrindavan so as gaudiya vaishnava devotees we want when we pull the rope of rath we are in the mood of assisting shrimati radharani we are assisting shrimati radharani to bring krishna back to vrindavan because we can't see the separation of radharani so as a as a 
Gaudiya Vaishnavas specifically. So our mood is <clears throat> our mood is serving in the mood of Rajvasis. That is our mood. So the three chariots uh, which are there for Lord Jagannath, Baldev Subhadra, so they are named as follows. Just excuse me one second. <clears throat> yeah. So Balbhadra chariot is named as Tal Dhwaj. Balram chariot is named as Tal Dhwaj. It is uh, the canopy is made with red and blue color and it has 14 wheels. 14 wheels. That's the first chariot which goes. The second chariot, which is of Subhadra Maharani, it is uh, known as Padma Dhwaja and uh, Dev Galan also it is known. There are two, three names. But Padma Dhwaja it is known and it is the canopy is made in the red and blue color and it has 12 wheels. And Lord Jagannath Rath is known as Nandi Ghosh and the canopy is made with red and yellow color and it has 16 wheels. No, maximum number of wheels. Sola chakke hai us rath mein. So first Balram goes, then Subhadra goes, and then Lord Jagannath goes in that way. So now coming to the uh, history of Iskon, how Jagannath came to Iskon, you might hear it again also, but I also would like to say this thing. Uh, Shila Prabhupada, he was a very uh, ardent devotee and a pure devotee of Lord Jagannath. And in his childhood, when he was five years old, so he wanted to hold. He was born in West Bengal, uh, Bengal and Kolkata. And uh, there he wanted to hold a Rathyatra festival. He was just five, six years old. So his father, Gaur Mohande, he rented one just a play kind of car, like a wheel and a, some altar, some wooden altar. And below that, they placed one wheel and a small small just uh, rath they made and they were just pulling it outside their house but it became a very big festival so since childhood Prabhupada was very fond of doing Rath Yatra and when he grew up and he became the founder Acharya for International Society for Krishna Consciousness so he was uh, he was establishing Radha Krishna temples all over the world uh, with Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, Montreal so once in San Francisco, one of his disciple, Malati Mataji, she went to an import store. Import store means this is the store which contains articles from other countries imported. So from there, she brought one small kind of doll, you know, with a small, and she showed to Prabhupada. They used to call at that time Prabhupada Swamiji. So Swamiji, what is this? She was very attracted to that war. When Swamiji saw, Prabhupada saw, he paid obeisances and he told, Oh, this is Jagannath. That was made in Jagannath. You now also you see many dolls and all are made in the form of Jagannath and they are sold. So then Prabhupada told, Where are the other two? There must be two more. So then he went and he bought the two more, uh, the three dolls, Jagannath, Valde, Subhadra. Kira Prabhupada, then he thought in his mind that maybe Jagannath wanted to come to West. Uh, so then in San Francisco, he made one altar and he installed the deities of Jagannath, Baldev and Subhutra. So then Lord, actually those deities when they were installed in that Iskon temple of San Francisco, the devotees serving there were so much fascinated by the worship of Jagannath, offering of bhoga and arati, so much fascinated that they were considering Jagannath as their own child, as their own friend. And just like they used to go out on garden for a stroll, for a walking, evening walk, or towards the beach side, they used to take Jagannath also with them. So, you know, every day, every day evening, they used to take Jagannath or the Subhadra with them. Placing in the car, they used to go and take him on a ride and, you know, go with you know, on the beach. So much affection they had with these deities of Jagannath or the Subhadra. So, once when Prabhupada came and he saw that, these deities are not there in the altar. So he uh, he told, where are they? He told Prabhupada, they have gone for an evening walk. Uh, so they told, hey, what is this? So Prabhupada, we do every day like this. Jagannath is our friend. He, we should take him on a walk. Otherwise, he will feel bored here every time sitting here. Just see so much personal connection. Because a devotee never sees 
DT is as just a stone or a wood or some metal. He sees life in the DT. There are innumerable pastimes of Lord Jagannath as DT he has performed. So it is your consciousness. If you see the murti or the DT as stone, they will behave with you as stone. If you see them as live Lord there, sitting there, he will behave you with like that. Hmm? The way you, Sarna, Krishna tells in Bhagavata, As you surrender to me, I will reciprocate accordingly with you. So most of the people in this world, they consider DT as just like a log of wood or some metal or stone like that. But those who have full faith that here is my Lord sitting, I must worship him, I must offer prayers to him. The Lord will behave accordingly with that person. So then uh, Srila Prabhupada told, no, no, this is not the way. It's an offense. Because if you take Jagannath like this outside, you may keep him somewhere dirty place. It's an offense to deities. But yes, once in a year, we have an opportunity where we can take Jagannath to the outside for a walk or for a ride. And that is on the Ratyatra. That is a chariot festival. So then Prabhupada started. Radhyatra festival in San Francisco and one of the very, very, very dear disciple of uh, Srila Prabhupada, His Grace Jayanand Prabhu, he built a big chariot for Jagannath in San Francisco, big chariot. And three chariots were made and Jagannath Gaudiya Subhadra, the first time Radhyatra happened in the Western countries. And when people saw this festival, they were so fascinated, lakhs and lakhs of people came to witness that festival and just imagine Lord Jagannath Gaudiya Subhadra is walking on the busiest streets of San Francisco and then Los Angeles, New York, everywhere, everywhere this festival started and see that's why it is the glory of Srila Prabhupada, the founder of ISKCON who really made Jagannath as Jagannath because Jagannath means Jag Ke Nath, the Lord of the whole universe. He is not confined to just one state or just one country. He is the Lord of the whole world, the whole universe. So Srila Prabhupada gave Jagannath actual his glory. And you know then all over the world the Jagannath Rathra started. And Srila Prabhupada used to uh, visit each center where Rathra used to happen. He used to dance you know, standing on Ratha. And then this became a kind of big festival in Iskorn. And now practically <laughs> Everywhere, whole world, you see Jagannath Rath Yatra uh, is celebrated with a great pomp because it was a mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to dance in front of Lord Jagannath amazingly. He used to make seven groups, and then you know, in each group, there were two Kartal, four Mandangas, singer, dancers. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to dance simultaneously in all the seven groups simultaneously. And he used to jump 10, 8 to 10 feet height and he used to then come down. And Mahaprabhu used to appear like a firebrand. You know, just like if fire you wall it, it becomes a, you know, a fire ring. So Mahaprabhu used to dance like this. And such an amazing view it was. So that's why his Yatra. Till date, nobody has been able to stop this festival. Even Britishers could not stop it. And it's a longest tradition coming from thousands of years. And it is said that anybody he, who visits or who sees Lord Jagannath mounted on a chariot, he all his sinful reactions from millions of lives will be burned to ashes. And if you pull the chariot, you know, with the rope, then the amount of piety you will acquire or you will get, there is no limit to it. So that's why we are very, very, very fortunate. We are born in the land of Bharat Varsa, where we are getting a chance to participate in all such great festivals. Just by participating in that, we are getting so much of pious spirits and our life becomes so glorious. So that's why all of you, dear students, please, you know, know the culture of our the great heritage which we have got from our ancestors and there has been many many 
occasions or conspiracies to stop Rathyatra in the bygone ages. But it is Jagannath's pure will or his devotee's pure desire, their sacrifices that we are getting these festivals in heritage to us till now. That's why you must participate on the 7th July, there will be Rathyatra. If anybody of you is planning to go to Puri, that's very, very wonderful. If not, then locally, like all of you might be in Daurkila, many of you, uh, almost all of you, I think so. So then you can participate in locally because everywhere a Thakra is happening. Here in Mumbai also, we have almost, you know, more than five to six Rathyatra on the same day. So I have to attend two Rathyatras. Our Iskon Rathyatra is also there and other temples also invite us for Rathyatras. So it's a great festival. Go and chant the holy name of Lord, dance in front of Lord. It's a big occasion, very great occasion of joy. Just like if, if suppose your brother or sister wedding is there, uh, specifically brother wedding is there, you dance on the road, on the street. You don't care that who is seeing me. Even after wearing costly dresses, we dance full enthusiasm to show to the world, oh, today is my brother's wedding. No, no, no. So I'm dancing. So same way, when Lord Jagannath comes, our devotees dance in the street and, you know, proclaim to the world, here comes the Lord of Universe. Please, oh, people, pay attention. Those who are too busy not to come to temple, for coming to temple, to them, devotees proclaim, oh, see, Lord Jagannath has come to bestow this mercy upon all of you. So take this mercy and purify your life. Take these blessings of Lord Jagannath and make your life sublime and pure and perfect your life. So this is the teachings which we spread around. So that's why uh, my my great you know wishes for all of you that this Jagannath festival should bring great auspiciousness to all of you. You are going to hear almost five days, five to six days Katha, Jagannath Katha. You are very, very fortunate that you are studying in such an institute like Parikshit Institute which is providing such a unique thing to your the student. I have never seen a uh, institute like this, which organizes such programs. Uh, although they are giving very costly gifts also, I came to know with quizzes, that secondary thing. But the primary thing is that they are providing you to hear from devotees, glories of Lord. That's the great, great benediction. In the Sastra, he said that, Sinvatam Sokatha Krishna Punna Sravana Kirtana Hrde Antastohi Abhadrani Vidunoti Suhitatam Sinvatam Only by hearing Swakatha Krishna Just by hearing the Krishna Katha Glories of Krishna Punna Sravana Kirtana It is very very auspicious hmm? What will happen by that? By that hearing Hrde Antastohi Abhadrani Abhadra means You might be knowing in Odia Abhadra means dirty things Whatever dirty things are there in our heart, antasta, in the core of our heart, like calm, growth, love, mohamad, matsarya, lust, anger, pride, greed, envy, illusion, all these things, vidunoti suhrit satam. Lord, who is suhrit, the best friend of his devotees, he cleanses vidunoti, vishesh rupena dhunoti, he cleanses dho dete pura hirde se kya, ye sab bad habits. Whatever bad habits we have, whatever bad tendencies we have, whatever bad thoughts we have in our heart or mind, Krishna just washes it off, cleanses it off just by hearing his katha. So anybody who is organizing this katha, so they must be very, very great. They are very great souls who are organizing this katha and distributing to the people for their welfare. So you must be very, very grateful to your teachers, to the organizers. Who are giving you Krishna Katha. It is not easy. It is very rare to really hear from an authentic source. So ISKCON is very authentic, uh, which, which is following the Guru Shishya Parampara and Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam on based on the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very authentic. So I must request all of you, please take advantage of this and fulfill your life. Have a very best career and best character lead a very good life and become a great example for the coming generation to show them that yes we believe our culture we follow our culture 
and by following our culture we are never losers we are the gainers and we have the best of both things in our hand a very bright career at the same time a very bright culture and character so this culture character and career if these three things come goes together then your life will be sublime there is no doubt about it so i once again thank parikshit institute and all of you for patient listening uh, this talk about rath yatra there are innumerable past times and glories of rath yatra but other speakers may speak more about it so thank you so much we we'll give some time for question answer in case you have thank you hari krishna yes prabhuji uh, we can address uh, people uh, who will raise some questions in the audience so i request the participants who want to ask some question can raise their hands so firstly we have jigisha das you can un ha hari krishna prabhu ji my question is what are the number of forms of lord krishna yeah so if you go for shastra they say that scripture say that if you go to the sea shore of uh, jagannath puri how many sand particles you get there so can you count the number of sand particles no in the same way you can't count the number of forms of krishna it's innumerable it's innumerable because krishna assumes different different forms in all the brahmandas so it is just one earth we are living in and it's a part of just one universe and there are innumerable universes which comes out from the body of mahavishnu so we can't count that number of forms but yes primarily uh, we know there are dasavtar we know 10 forms by jayadev goswami kurma matsavaraha narsim and vamana and uh, like this 10 forms shrimad bhagavatam mentions 24 forms of lord which includes even narad muni other they are all satavish avatar but and jagannath and like this there are special forms like jagannath tirupati balaji pandarpur in uh, maharashtra badrinath so they all assumes forms based on certain situations so these are same krishna but he comes in a different form just like you sometime you wear a different dress on diwali or some different dress so you appear differently in different occasions in some wedding you appear differently or you appear in birthday festival some differently same way same krishna he appears in different different way for the pleasure of his devotees just like lord jagannath on snan yatra day he appears like gajana ganpati for his famous devotee ganpati bhat he assumed that form so but in in uh, short you cannot count the number of forms of krishna thank you thank you sir prabhu ji next with us we have nikita paul i yes. request her to unmute herself and ask the question hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna prabhu ji i wanted to ask that i have heard about that lord the chariots of lord jagannath balram and subhadra their chariots also have some unique uh, uniqueness in their horses so prabhu ji i would like to know that what uh, uniqueness they have i want to know about it yeah see uh, in detail i so to say what i i don't know about their horses specifically but every uh you can say that like lord krishna or even pandavas they used to have their unique horses you know so if you want i can request the parishit you that they can give you the names of the horses there are certain names of horses but i right now i don't remember their names they are quite complex in that but yes uh, like it is said uh, arjuna's horses were white but lord's horses they are black so they they have their own choice see lord when we say krishna balram they are also they are also beings we can't say exactly human beings they are god of course but they have likings so they have their different uh, uh, chariots and horses their own style if you want to know the detail about the horses 
uh, we will find and get it to you. I may request Parikshit, uh, the organizers, that they may uh, give to you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, now we have Pramod Behra. I would request him to unmute himself and ask the questions. Yeah. I think Pramod Behra isn't available in the class, uh, so we can move to the next one. Suryan Singh. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, as you have described that there were the three reasons for the Rathyatra festival. And the third reason was that... Uh, uh, yeah, the third reason was that... Here, all the per all the peoples wanted Krishna well, forcefully to bring him to the Vrindavan from the Dwarka. Uh, that's why we pull all the chariots uh, of the Krishna, uh, sorry, Jagannath. Uh, <clears throat> but why do we pull the chariots of the Subhadra and Balbhadra, uh, Balram also? Yeah, you see. So as I told that there was reason. If Krishna would go alone to Vrindavan, then probably he would not come back by seeing the conditions of Vrindavan. So Balram and Subhadra, they go in advance to prepare to receive Krishna and then settle out the things there and then bring it back. You know, sometimes like, uh, uh, like, like all of us, when we go home, we go with one uh, more devotee, like one more person because uh, Sometimes when we go, then if we are lost there, or you know, we just we want we want to go for three days and we stay there for indefinitely, then it's a problem. So then we take one more duty so that he will remind us, oh, you have so many things, please come back. It generally happens like this. So in in our ashram, they don't they tell me to not to go alone, go with another devotee to protect us, just like that. Same way, just an example. So when we take Krishna, all the devotees. See, Balram and Subhadra, they are not ordinary people. They are brother and sister of Jagannath. I must tell you, when you serve Krishna directly, you may get certain benefit. But when you serve Krishna's devotees, you get more benefit. Because Krishna loves his devotees so much that if you serve them, then Krishna becomes more pleased. So that's why if Krishna loves devotees so much, what to speak of his own brother and sister? So if you serve them by pulling their chariot and taking them to Vrindavan, then you know how much benefit you will get. Just imagine. Like, like I take a tour to Vrindavan. So when I take Yatras to Vrindavan, then all the people, they are so much, they praise us, they glorify us, they thank you so much, you brought us to Vrindavan. We wanted to come from so many years, but you brought us to Vrindavan. So Krishna becomes pleased by anyone who takes anyone to Vrindavan because that is his own home. So that's why when we devotees, we pull the chariot of Subhadra and Balram. So Jagannath becomes more pleased. Oh, see, they are assisting my brother and sister to go to Vrindavan. Krishna loves Vrindavan so much. This is probably the reason or the mood in which, which I understand we pull the chariot of Balram and Subhadra. Okay. Dhanyavad, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, next, we have Ashmit, Ashmit Panda. Hare Krishna, Babuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, I have, uh, uh, I used to uh, say to my friends that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I went to Mayapur and I saw all that. And uh, they argue that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, not divine because his name is not mentioned in the avatars of Lord Hari. So I did not have anything to say back to them. I, did, I don't know how to respond. I could not get you, Prabhu. Sorry. Can you repeat? What's the question? Um, I heard and I believe that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a uh, manifestation of Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna. But my friends argue that uh, they are not, since their name is not mentioned in uh, the Shastras and Puranas, that uh, he is oh, in nation. I understand. I understand. I understand. See, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Shan Avatar and he is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. 
so you it is not that he is not mentioned is mentioned in mahabharat shrimad bhagavatam and all the places but not directly like i'll give you one verse from shrimad bhagavatam 11th canto it is mentioned that krishna varnam tusha krishnam sango pangasta parsadam yagye sankirtan prayajanti sumedasa this is his mention what is tell krishna varnam tusha a krishna krishna varnam varnam is varnati that incarnation of lord who is always glorifying who is telling krishna 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 all the time but he's he's uh, tusha a krishna tusha means chamdi like the skin a krishna he's not blackish and then it tell what sango pangastra pasadam he is accompanied by his sanga and upanga so and then what he is doing yagya sankirtan prayer all the time prayer all the time almost all the time he is doing sankirtan yagya so who is that who is doing this thing who is matching to this words chaitanya mahaprabhu and said yajanti sumedasa the uh, intelligent people will worship such a form of lord that is in bhagavatam then there are more than 100 references of chaitanya mahaprabhu in different different shastras more than so i think you must show this to your friends who are arguing in that way and you may request uh, prashin should or even i can say there is one folder there is one uh, article in which it is written all the references are given so there is no doubt about it so please be assured sri chaitanya mahaprabhu is krishna himself in the form of shrimati radhani thank you next we have mosmi mosmi dharma uh, she is not responding so we can move to the shima mahanta namaskar prabhu ji yes so my question is uh, we see that uh, in some years 12 or so i believe uh, uh, the jagannath temple idol is changed and uh, but one thing is not changed uh, that is i believe called a brahma pradat that's like uh, heart of krishna can you tell us something about that yeah see prabhu ji one thing is there uh, there are many rumors about this heart of lord krishna see it it is not necessary that there has to be heart in the dt for krishna to be present there when a dt is installed so when a pure devotee according to the process mentioned in scriptures he invites lord so lord comes and resides there so like in iskon we have hundreds of temples there according to the rituals given when a pure devotee he invites lord comes and there has been many past times who deities have performed so they are not just stone a jagannath is not just wood so my humble request to you will be there specifically is that please don't uh, entertain such things unnecessary something uh, something curious out of curiosity you want to know of course that is true but we should not believe much on some magical things happening our faith on lord jagannath doesn't come from the magic our faith on lord jagannath comes from shastras and from devotees so that's why because yesterday i was giving one lecture on jagannath lord jagannath past time the same question came people like same like when people go to vrindavan they want to go to nidhi van and they want to see oh is really krishna perform rasleela with radharani and gopis but we are not in that mood to you know entertain such things because we are not on that level first let us become a sincere and good devotee then everything will be revealed to us i am not i am not uh, criticizing anybody or i am not just uh, you know disclaiming this or okay it it is not true but my un- understanding is that we don't venture into such things because it is beyond our scope to understand those things so let let us put faith on jagannath based on scriptures and what great acharyas have taught us so i think we will become a better devotee by that that's my humble opinion thank you okay thank you ma'am so probably most probably will be taking the last question for today and we'll end the session uh, pranita panda pranit panda actually hari krishna prabhu ji 
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी कैन यू एक्सप्लेन मी वाई द चतुर्द मूर्ति वेर स्टाहिया एट द टाइम ऑफ पहंडी सॉरी प्रभु जी नॉट गेट यू प्लीज अगेन Why did the Chaturdha Murtis wear tahiya at the time of Pahandi? The Pahandi. Oh, okay. See, this is a this is a ritual that I I really don't know about it. You may ask uh, certain resident of Puri who have attended uh, this thing because uh, honest telling, I have never been to Jagannath Puri on Rath Yatra occasion. I have only been elsewhere else other time. so any particular devotee who is a resident of puri or who knows about it the probably the other speakers who will come may answer your question but please forgive me i don't know about this particular ritual in that sense okay thank you okay fine yeah so much prabhu yes prabhu uh, we are done for the today session uh, uh, we thank uh, we are very thankful to you ki aapne hama itna samay diya aapka aur bhagwan ke bare mein itni katha hi batayi hum sab uh, request karna chahte hain participants se ki three time hari bol chant karke aapko apna dhanyawad adar kare थैंक यू प्रभु हरे कृष्णा हरी बोल थैंक यू